Hi, Patrick Phillip here at Effective Martial Arts HQ, and in this lesson, how to punch. All right, so in this video, we're gonna cover everything you need to know to be able to throw a decent punch. And if you're already able to do so, you can discover the exact steps to teach a complete beginner how to be able to punch harder, faster. Now on this channel, Effective Martial Arts, and in our school, we teach one curriculum for striking, wrestling, and grappling. So basically everything you need to know to be able to defend yourself in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So if you're new here, subscribe right now and hit the notification bell because we are just getting started and really excited about all the powerful content we got coming your way. So quick overview first, we're gonna look at all the basic punches, specifically your throwing punches, which are the jab and the cross, as well as your swinging punches, which are the lead hook, back hook, lead uppercut, back uppercut, lead overhand punch, and back overhand punch, with certain variations for each. But more importantly, we're gonna look at the three core principles that you must understand when you begin your study of punching. This will really cut your learning curve and make sure that you're able to progress faster. We're going to look at the steps of execution for each punch, those that are common to all punches, as well as the particularities of each one of those punches. And we're going to look at the most common mistakes that all most beginners do. So we've taught these punches and these techniques to hundreds of beginners, and it's always the same mistakes that come back over and over again for each one of those punches. So we're going to learn to identify these mistakes in advance, uh, prevent them, and specific drills that we can use to correct these mistakes to make sure we have correct technical execution and we're able to punch harder, faster. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so principles first. So like we said, there's three core principles that we need to keep in mind before we begin our study of punching, and that's really gonna help cut the learning curve and save a tremendous amount of time and develop effectiveness faster. So principle number one, the power first principle. What this says basically is that out of all the aspects that we need to practice for punching, so there's timing, there's precision, accuracy, there's uh, safety, there's mobility, setups, uh, having no tell, combinations, follow-ups, uh, feints, uh, there's a lot of principles to apply in punching. But the first one that we need to develop is power. You must develop the ability to pose a legitimate threat to your opponent, attacker, or even training partners always with safety in mind when you're practicing, but your punches need to be convincing first. You need to have the ability to create damage with your punches. So that means the first thing you should develop is power in your punches. And that brings us to principle number two, which is the application of the 80-20 principle, otherwise known as Pareto's law. Now, this means, I won't go into detail, look it up if you're not familiar with it already, but essentially what it means is that typically, 80% of the results come from 20% of the causes. Now, what this means for punching is that typically, the most common punches used in fights and the ones that you'll have the most success with are very few. And if you look at professional fights, the vast majority of strikes thrown are the jab and the cross. So specifically the jab probably is the most commonly thrown punch, but the cross is most likely the one most often responsible for knockouts. So when you're just beginning your study of punching, we recommend that you spend a lot of time developing a decent straight cross. That's gonna be very valuable for you long-term because it's a punch that's, the jab is relatively easy to understand and apply, the cross, most students struggle with it a little bit more. So we're going to give you some tools to develop a decent cross faster. And the third very important principle to understand is the principle of biomechanics, or specifically understanding throwing and swinging mechanics to develop power in your punches. Now, if you ask most beginners to throw a punch, they usually punch from the shoulder and they don't engage the rest of the body at all. And you're gonna have very poor results when you do so in terms of the development of power and creating damage with your punches. So you really wanna understand the steps that are common to each one of those punches. And they're always the same. So you have your loading phase, you have your weight transfer, you have your twist, and then you have your using your kinetic chain to transfer power from the ground through each one of your joints. So ankle, knee, hip, core, shoulder, elbow, and then wrist and all the way to knuckles to develop power all the way into your target. And that brings us to proper fist and forearm placement when you're punching. 
So we actually recommend to beginners to begin punching barehanded, albeit lighter when you begin. The reason for that is it'll force you to develop proper body mechanics in your forearm and fist to develop power through your arm and into the target. So making a fist 101, if you're not familiar, very simple, hands straight, roll the fingers, and then thumbs in front over here, so you have a nice flat surface with your knuckles. You also want to be hitting with the middle finger knuckle predominantly, a little bit with the index, but you want to stay away in general from those two small knuckles here. One, because they're a little bit more frail in terms of bone, so they're more prone to breaking. And also, the alignment is not as good. If you hit with this, it doesn't go straight into the forearm. It goes kind of with an angle. It's not impossible to develop power with those knuckles. You can punch uh, and you can condition them as well. But typically, you're gonna hit with the middle finger knuckle for best results. You also want your wrist to be straight. So if you apply pressure, your wrist should be very straight and the power can go through here. If your wrist is bent like this, it can bend even more when you hit. Or if you hit like this, hit with the knuckles, it won't transfer the weight and then it can bend this way. So you really want to have a flat surface with your fist. In order to condition this, you could basically plank on your fist or do push-ups on your fist and this will help solidify the wrist and the forearm to support your punching. Now when you strike a target, either somebody holding pads or you strike the bag, I actually prefer hitting barehanded and I'm at the point now when I can hit as hard with no gloves or with gloves. So that's like the downfall. If you wrap your hands all the time and you work, wear big gloves, it's gonna allow you to neglect your technique a little bit and you can develop bad habits so that when you ever, if you ever need to punch barehanded, you could hurt yourself at that point. So the method to be able to punch bare knuckle is very simple, start light, and uh, monitor your skin all the time when you're punching to make sure the skin doesn't uh, bleed. So don't bleed, it's quite simple. Uh, your skin is gonna get tougher over time and eventually you will be able to punch 100% with no wraps and no gloves. In the meantime, start light. And if you notice the skin is getting a little bit too irritated when you're punching the bag barehanded, uh, just stop, switch to uh, palm strikes, which is equally good, or elbows or kicks, or switch to practicing something else. It's also not wrong to wrap your hands or wear gloves uh, to punch with more power, but you should be comfortable punching barehanded as well. One more thing that's important to consider in terms of biomechanics is what are the actual targets that we're aiming for on another human body? We looked at what part of our body we're using as weapons and how to transfer force into those weapons. But we also want to look at where we're going to aim. Now to make it super simple, your primary target is going to be the jaw or the nose, so basically the muzzle area. On the head, in general, you want to stay away from the cranium or the skull because that's a very strong bone that's made to protect your brain. And you can actually break your knuckles on a skull and it won't create nearly as much damage as hitting the chin. On the body, you wanna be aiming for the plexus area right here where the rib cage meets the breastplate and right below that in that soft spot. You also can aim for either side here in the ribs, so liver shot and ribs on both sides. In general, you wanna stay away from the breastplate because that's very solid, as well as from the ab regions because most people can take a decent punch in the abs. But the sweet spot is really the plexus area right here. Now the reality of fighting is that it's a chaotic situation. The person is moving, you're moving, so you don't necessarily land your punches everywhere you want to every time, far from it. But just having those targets in mind is a good place to start. If you're not even aiming at the right place, your chances of hitting the right targets are very low. And furthermore, you're gonna have the hands to deal with, you're gonna have the person's movement, you're gonna need to cover distance, you're gonna need to set up your angles. We're gonna look at all that in future videos. This is just a basic how to punch video. So keep those targets in mind as you're practicing your punches. Now all that being said, let's look at each one of the punches in more detail. All right, now first let's look at the jab. So once again, the five steps. One, load. Two, transfer and twist. Three, use the kinetic chain to transfer power into the punch. Four, simultaneous defense, backhand and lead shoulder. And five, recovery, right back to our fighting stance. Now what's helpful as well, a common mistake uh, for the straight punches, jab and cross, or all punches actually, 
Sometimes uh, beginners, a lot of the times, they get their chin up as they punch. So they kind of raise the chin as they punch. So you want to correct that mistake by doing the final position and holding the final position to correct that. So just holding this position here, backhand glued to the face, lead shoulder glued to the face, shoulders in line with the target, and we just hold that to make sure that we have a good position, feet under the center of gravity, the um, head no further than the front foot, and looking at our target. So this. We want to memorize the position like so, and then come back to our guard. So here in the position, transfer a little bit of weight, a little bit of twist in the hip, twist in the shoulder, here reach and come back. Another helpful drill to uh, understand the kinetic chain and be able to be relaxed is to have proper breathing when you're executing each one of those punches, starting with the jab. So typically any exercise or any technique, you want to be breathing out when you initiate. So when you're starting the jab, load here and push, breathe out and relax. You want to imagine like your arms are chains and your fists are iron balls at the end of those chains. So you're throwing them in a straight line and coming back in a straight line. The other common mistake for the jab is to not use proper alignment to develop power into the strike. So basically sometimes people start it from here and then they kind of do kind of a flicking motion like this which is not wrong if you're trying to do a back fist and this could be a good surprising attack to set up other things. But if you're trying to do a jab and you're trying to do it powerfully, you want your fist in front of your shoulder first and then extend in a straight line so that the power of your body and your mass is behind the weapon, which is your fist and it's going in a straight line towards the target. So that's another common mistake for the jab and how to correct it uh, with this specific drill. Now, some people might say that it's not good to load your jab because it's gonna give you a little bit more tell and it's not gonna be fast enough. And typically the jab is a technique that really relies on speed to be effective. But again, coming back to the power principle, you wanna help beginners, and if you're just starting out, you wanna develop power in each one of those punches first. And then I'm gonna work for speed and uh, subtlety later. So putting a little bit of weight on the back leg so that we can transfer that weight forward is going to be helpful. Furthermore, if you look at uh, even top level fighters, they do so unconsciously. So they kind of put a little bit of weight before they transfer it, even if it's very subtle. And that's the difference. Uh, beginners won't do that if they don't understand that they should be doing it. So starting by exaggerating the movement is going to be helpful. And then when we do it faster in real life, you do, there's a little bit of a load, but it's very subtle. Moving on, the cross. Now, this is where we're gonna be spending the bulk of our time when we first begin punching, and that's what we do with the beginners in our programs. So understanding, because there's a lot of things that go into it, it's the same upper body position, but now punching with the backhand, but the most important thing here is that we have a weight transfer and the fighting twist. So if you've missed our fighting stance video, check it out right now. We spent a lot of time with different variations on the fighting twist to understand our base, our stability, and how to transfer and move our body efficiently and effectively from our feet. This is gonna be essential to develop power in our cross. It really comes from the back leg and then transferring that power through our entire body all the way to the back hand. So again, load. So we're gonna put weight on that back leg. We're gonna push off that back leg and transfer our weight forward. We want your head to be no further than your front foot. Very important, you don't wanna lean into it. Common mistake, we're gonna see how to correct that later. So transfer, so load, transfer, twist. So as you transfer, you wanna twist. You wanna raise your back heel over here until your back knee is pointing towards your front knee. You wanna turn your hips as far as they can go and then your shoulders as far as they can go until you can reach the position here where your arm is extended and chin tuck, protection on the other side. And very important now from this fighting stance here, twisting, our lead shoulder becomes the back shoulder and the back shoulder becomes the lead shoulder. So now our shoulders are in line with the target. That's how to have maximum reach and maximum power. Again, sometimes you're just gonna do a short cross over here and you don't need to go all the way, but you wanna have the ability to do so. So again, we're here, we're in the fighting stance. Load, transfer, transfer and twist, twist the upper body and straight line over here and come right back. 
We also spend some time on holding the final position to make sure that we're comfortable in this position. And that requires a little bit of uh, dexterity and a little bit of flexibility and strength. It's an unusual position for a lot of people that are just beginning, so you wanna spend some time on that. Common mistake as well is straining the lead knee. So if you do so, so it's more comfortable because a lot of beginners, uh, their legs are, aren't that strong yet. So it's more comfortable to be uh, legs straight but we talk about this a lot in the uh, fighting stance video, knees bent, okay? Feet wide, knees bent, chin down are your three main requirements that we emphasize all the time. Uh, because if you straighten out your knee, one, you're much more vulnerable to strikes to the lead leg, and two, it's gonna be very tedious to now bend and then retreat after. So you wanna keep that knee bent so you can engage the powerful quad muscle to move faster and recover after your cross. So lead knee bent. Other very common mistake is leaning into it too much. So people punch and then their head goes further than their lead foot. Very uh, fatal, potentially fatal mistake. You wanna keep your head behind your front foot as you punch. Now a very cool drill to help people understand and help you understand how to correct that bad habit when you're just starting is to actually eliminate the weight transfer aspect of the cross. So we're gonna do a cross using only the twist. So the head stays here. Sometimes you can have someone place their hand or a pad or something in front of your face, and then you can't bring your face forward and you're forced to punch just with the twist. Just with the twist, without bringing your head forward at all. So you're here, boom, just punch, punch, and the head does not move forward. Here, here. So you're forced to really isolate the twist and then when you add a little bit of a weight transfer, you can come back. So that's a general rule to correct any technique. You wanna take it to the other extreme to really understand what you should be doing, and then you go back into the middle for a correct execution. So here, you do wanna transfer some weight forward for maximum power, but you never want your head to go above your front foot, here. And you wanna be able to do your cross on both sides. So again, we wanna be able to do most techniques on both sides because they're gonna give us more versatility, more uh, muscle balance as well, it's gonna increase our endurance in a real situation. And it's really gonna be conducive to better joint health and postural health long-term. So cross on both sides, here or here. Always breathing out as you initiate and nice and relaxed. And then coming right back to your guard, your recovery is gonna be important. Another very cool drill that's gonna help you understand your posture in the cross punch is gonna be to add the back step right after you punch. So you punch and then you're forced to step back out of range. So here, punch and step back. If you are making the mistake of leaning too far forward, your back step is gonna be very tedious. Whereas if you keep good posture and you keep your head far away from the target, it's gonna be easy to step back. And a cool drill as well, if you're, uh, you have partners accessible, is somebody holds the pad, and as soon as you strike your cross, they come at you and they try to touch you on the belly with the other pad, and you're forced to step back, and you try to step back faster before they can actually touch you. So that's gonna start planting the seed for simultaneous defense after your offense. And those are the essentials of your throwing punches, or the jab and the cross, otherwise known as the one and the two. The next step is to put them together, so jab and cross. So you basically use the rebound of the jab to go straight into your cross. Now, uh, your jab, you're already moving forward, so it's a very quick combination and possibly the most common combination uh, in all of uh, punching or martial arts. So jab, so you bring your body forward a little bit, and as your jab retracts, your cross goes right away. The other option is to add a step as well, so you can step into the jab, so the lead foot moves as you're punching at the same time, and the back foot, as you're pushing off the ground for your cross, it catches up and comes back over here. So stepping into it, and then stepping out. Relax, breathe out, like so. One more thing that's really important to understand when you're beginning your study of punching, or you wanna help somebody else develop the ability to throw a decent punch, is to understand the importance of prioritizing corrections. So going back to the power first principle, if you're not able to throw a decent punch already, well, it doesn't matter that much where your backhand is, right? So you wanna be able to first throw a decent punch. You wanna have that weight transfer, you wanna have that hip mobility, you wanna correct the fact of not leaning too far forward, and you wanna have full extension, relaxation, breathing first, and that matters more than the backhand up. 
Same thing also, your recovery will come after. So once you're able to throw a decent punch, then you work on recovery. So it doesn't matter that much what the person does after the punch until they're able to develop a decent punch. Now, of course, all those corrections are important, but you want to prioritize because otherwise you're going to get confused. And if you're teaching somebody else how to punch, you're going to confuse them. As you introduce a new correction, they will forget the first one. So really be attentive to your progress if you're kind of coaching yourself or if you want to help somebody else do it. Until that first correction has been applied, do not move on to the second one. Very important concept on how to teach martial arts. Another very common mistake that a lot of beginners do for straight throwing punches, specifically when they want to go to the body, is they do it from a standard fighting stance position like so or like this. And you can see the problem with this is that one, my fist is not hitting perpendicular to the target. So I'm not creating the maximum amount of force delivered into the target. It can kind of ricochet and the force is not optimal. Furthermore, I'm pushing out that back foot. The power is going into my hip, into my shoulder, and then back down towards the target. So there's kind of a break in the kinetic chain at this point. So what you want to do for straight punches, it is very important to change your level. And you want your shoulder at the same height as the target that you're hitting. That way you can transfer the power into the strike with much more effectiveness. And that's true for the jab as well as the cross. Now this is not necessarily the case for swinging punches. You can do uppercuts to the body while staying upright because now your shoulder is the point of rotation and you can transfer power from the hip into the body and into the shoulder and create that rotation where now the punch is going to land with power. If you want to go hooks to the body and hit horizontally, yes, you need to change your elevation and go around like this or like this, so loading and swinging mechanics. But you can also do what we call the Mexican uppercut, which is kind of a cross between the hook and the uppercut, where you can stay upright and then dig it at a 45 degree angle into the ribs, which is a valuable target. And that's possible on either side. So that mistake is really an easy fix. It's just a matter of knowing that when you're doing straight punches or horizontal hooks, you want to change your elevation to attack the body. And if you're going to hit with uppercuts to the body, you can stay upright. Most beginners, when you tell them, they're able to apply it right away. So again, we recommend you spend a lot of time on your throwing punches, so your jab and your cross when you're just beginning, and really make sure you're not making any one of those mistakes that we mentioned earlier, and practice until you got it. And really make sure you got those punches before you get into the next ones that we're gonna show you, which are your swinging punches. That being said, you can still watch the end of this video because it's helpful to plant the seed right now and to understand the distinction between both those types of punches. But we recommend you divide your practice up. So you start by really mastering your straight punches and then put the other ones on the back burner until you're good with those. And then you focus on the next step. Uh, so you go progressively and uh, systematically to develop a strong, complete punching arsenal. That being said, let's get right into swinging punches. All right, so I think it's really important to understand that all swinging punches, hooks, uppercuts, and overhand punches, utilize the same type of body mechanics. The only difference is the angle from which they're coming here. So the principle is the same. You always have a loading phase, you have a weight transfer, you have a twist, but now instead of staying tight to your body and going in a straight line like the straight punches, you're allowing the punches to go wider and swing around your body to come back. Now, the most common mistake for all swinging punches is again, people try to punch with the arms, so they're not really engaging the body at all, they just punch with the arms. And if they are engaging the body, typically they're gonna be moving everything as one block, and that's gonna be suboptimal in terms of developing a maximum amount of power in those punches. What you want to be doing is you want to be moving your body ahead of your punch and then the punch catches up because then you're going to be utilizing the elastic energy specifically in your chest and bicep muscle to have more power in your punch. So very um, subtle and this is tough to understand. That's why for beginners we really focus on the straight punches first. But if you're good and you understand those and you're able to understand your swinging punches, that's gonna really complete your punching arsenal because you don't wanna be just ideally punching to the straight line, you wanna be attacking from the sides as well, so attacking from all angles. Now to help you understand those swinging mechanics, we developed a series of drills that help you understand. So 
Like we said, uh, punching just with the arm or having too stiff of an arm and not really uh, having the relaxation to develop power are the common mistakes that we see for uh, all the swinging or the round punches. So how to correct that, we uh, do basically, the, we call it the limp arm drill. So you're gonna imagine that your arms are completely limp. You have no motor control on your arms from the shoulder down. All you can control is your core and your legs. And just with that movement, without controlling your arms, you're gonna try to swing your arms here and here, using your legs, your hips, and your core muscles. So just swing your arms here. And then you just let your arms go floppy on both sides. And this is gonna help you understand how to swing your punches here. Uh, it looks a little bit weird, but it's very effective in understanding the proper mechanics. You can do the same thing with the overhand or the uppercut. So going down here and then swinging your arm up. Down and swing it up, down and swing it up, or down and then up and down, here, up and down to swing over the shoulder for the overhand punch. So that's how you develop those body mechanics. The next step once you're able to do that, to get a little bit closer to an actual punch, is we're gonna imagine that our arm is in a cast, here at a 90 degree angle. So from here, we again have no motor control on our arms or our shoulders, but our elbows stay bent at a 90 degree angle. From there, arms are still loose, but they're in 90 degree angle cast. From there, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna swing here the arms, using only the legs and the core muscles to swing. Same thing for the uppercuts, we can swing here, but the arms stay completely relaxed at the shoulders. Same thing for the overhand, here and here. And once you're able to do that, then you do the actual technique, where you start from a correct fighting stance, load, open, and swing, here and here. So it's a work in progress. Again, these punches are a little bit more advanced than the throwing ones that we saw earlier. So, but if you practice those drills and spend a uh, significant amount of time, you will be able to throw a decent punch with a lot of power. So the five steps are the same one loading phase. Let's start with the lead hook. So lead hand here, load here. So we bring a front fighting twist, bring our head above the front foot. So weight is on the front leg, pivot the back heel, turn the shoulders, turn the hips, and we're here. Now we're gonna push off this lead leg and open up our body. When we do so, we're gonna leave our fist at the same exact position as it was. So we're gonna open up, so push off the leg, turn the hips, open up the chest, and all the time, you see the fist did not move. I'm opening up the chest over here and then raising the elbow so I make a alignment with the forearm towards the target. From here, you'll reach a point where you reach maximum stretch. You can't go any further without moving your fist. So at that point, you wanna let, kind of like a slingshot, you let it go and then boom, it whips in and then you recover. Again, so load, here, open up and see the fist stays at the exact same space here. And then when I can't go anymore, raise here. So you can do that as a drill, just open up here, here. And then let go to slingshot and come back. Load and strike, load and strike. Common mistake for beginners is uh, they load by pulling the arm back here and here. And yeah, you can have power when you do so, but it's way too telegraphed. What you need to do is move your body instead. Move your body ahead of the punch and then strike right after. When you do it full speed, it's not very evident if you don't know. So it, it, you can hardly tell what's moving first, but if you break it apart, you'll see that the body moves first, stretch in the chest, and then whip it in for maximum power. Same thing for the back hook. Here, load the back leg, open up the chest. Here, turn the hips, turn the chest, leave the fist behind, and then whip it in to the target. And the hooks are gonna be horizontal punches, so they're really coming across the horizon here to strike. A little detail here for the hooks, when you're hitting from really close, you can go palm in over here because you want that 90 degree angle bend in the forearm so you can strike the target like so. If the target is a little bit further away, you can go palm down so then you still have a flat target with the knuckles. If you try from further away to go in, you can't reach that angle where the knuckles are flat. And if it's even further away, you can go palm out here. So again, you have that flat surface with the knuckles to strike over here. So depending on the distance, close range, middle range, and long range for the hook, either for the back or the front hook. Now real quick, another common mistake for the hook punch is to overshoot it and expose our back. 
And that goes against the principle of access. In general, you always want to be facing your opponent and back exposure is a bad thing. If you go too far here, you're exposed to strikes to the back of the leg, clinching to your back, and you can't really see what's going on as well, which is not a good thing in a fight. So you always want to face your opponent, and in case of the hook, you want to shoot it, and the furthest you're going to go is with your chin tuck, shoulder up, and your elbow in front of your face, here, and then you do a quick retraction. Same thing for the back hook, here, go as far here, and come back. Your shoulders are in line with the target, but no further. Here, hook punch, and come back. Now for the uppercuts, the principles are going to be exactly the same, except there's a vertical component to the uppercuts, right? You want to be hitting upwards. So in this case, you want to squat down a little bit. You want to lower your elevation and then rise up and leave the fist behind here. So you create that stretch more in the upper chest or the shoulder to pull the arm into the strike. So load and then strike up here. So load the lead leg, strike up and load the back leg and strike up. Now when you transfer the weight, you can go from back leg to lead leg and from lead leg to back leg, but you can also go straight up and keep the weight on the lead leg if you want to reach further. The requirement is simply to have your head still in between your feet. So sometimes you want to reach further with your lead uppercut here. But the principle is always the same. Load first, transfer, twist, and then the kinetic chain here is moving your body ahead of your arm and specifically your fist so you can swing it in and whip it in for maximum power. Again, there will be times where it's in your best interest to sacrifice power for more speed and be more conservative in the loading phase for just a quick punch like so. But again, going back to the power first principle, even when if it's a small quick punch, we still want to engage the whole body. And usually that's the main challenge for beginners. Either they don't engage the body at all, and sometimes they even kind of go down with the punch. So they do kind of a reverse fighting twist, but it's taking away power from the punch. So what we want to do is really transfer the weight here. So a little bit of a squat, weight transfer, fighting twist, and use the momentum to swing that arm up into the target for maximum power. Furthermore, if you look at professional fights, boxing or mixed martial arts, the guys really swing because they understand the importance of power. The opponent has to respect your power and your punches have to have the ability to knock someone out. Otherwise, you're just tickling the other person's chin while they throw a powerful punch at you. So again, power first. And when we become tighter in our punches, later on, we're still engaging the whole body and we just do it tighter to set up other attacks. We're gonna see that more in detail in future videos. And lastly, very powerful, the overhand punch. This is gonna be a very powerful attack that's specifically good on a taller opponent. So you can actually reach higher with an overhand punch. Now very simple, for this one, there's two main variations we're gonna to get to in a moment, but essentially, when you're ready to go for it, you're gonna let your arm drop. And from there, you're gonna take a step in the direction that you wanna hit and lower your level slightly. So you're going down with the punch. Common mistake here is as you go down is to expose your face. So if there's a kick or a knee coming, you will be in trouble. But if you set it up properly, you're gonna see that in more videos, you will be all right. And your opponent is gonna be forced to react to this because it's a very powerful attack. So you protect yourself on the way in, you drop the fist here, you take a step in that direction, and then you swing it around here. At the point of impact, your knuckles are gonna be facing the target, palm facing out, thumb facing down here. So that when you hit the target, you hear, here, drop the hand, step in this direction, protect with the lead hand at the same time, and run around here so you can develop good power in that punch. You're gonna be aiming mostly for the bridge of the nose or the side of the jaw with a powerful overhand punch. It's also possible with the lead hand as well, body dipping down and swinging the arm around to have maximum power. Now there's an interesting variant for the overhand punch, which is kind of a hybrid between your throwing and your swinging mechanics. So this is a little bit more advanced, but essentially you can do a cross between both. So instead of swinging it all the way around and using proper swinging mechanics or throwing it in a straight line, you can kind of throw a curveball over here. So going over the guard and landing your overhand punch here at a 40, so typically the guard is here, so it lands on either side over the guard and on the chin 
here or here. So you could do a kind of a hybrid for more of a quick overhand punch or more like a haymaker or for a powerful overhand punch, you swing it around and create a lot of damage. All right, so quick recap. We saw all the basic punches, which are your throwing punches, specifically the jab and the cross, as well as your swinging punches, which are the lead hook, back hook, lead uppercut, back uppercut, lead overhand punch, and back overhand punch. We also saw the three basic principles of punching, which are number one, the power first principle, which means that you should be able to develop power with your punches first. And that's more important than speed, non-telegraphing, or simultaneous safety. Focus on creating damage with your punches first as a developing student in the martial arts. Principle number two is closely related is the application of Pareto's law or the 80-20 principle, which states that when you begin your study of punching, you should focus most of your attention on developing a solid straight cross. So at least you'll have one potent weapon in your arsenal. And as you develop that, then you can add on other weapons, which will be your swinging punches. And the third basic principle is the application of biomechanics to your punching. So quite simply, this means that you need to engage your whole body in the act of punching. So either with throwing or swinging mechanics, so you can develop power in your punches. You also wanna be relaxed and you wanna breathe out when you initiate your punch. We also saw the main weapon that we're using, which is making a solid fist. So roll the fingers, thumb in front, aligning the big finger knuckle here to maximum power, as well as aligning your wrist nice and straight and your forearm perpendicular to the target that you're hitting, wherever that target may be. We also saw the most valuable targets on another human body, which are the chin, which acts as a lever on the skull. So if you hit it in the right angle, it'll rattle the brain inside the skull, and that's what creates knockouts. On the body, the main target you're aiming for is the plexus area right here, as well as the ribs on both sides. We also saw the five steps of any punch, which are number one, your loading phase. So you want to transfer weight to the leg off which you're going to push to generate power into your punch, either the lead leg or the back leg. Then you have your weight transfer, which essentially states that you want your body moving in the direction of the impact you want to create. So for straight punches, your body moves forward. For hooks, you're going to generate a twisting motion. For uppercuts, your body moving upward and overhand punches, typically your body is gonna be moving down slightly. Then you have the use of the kinetic chain or the fighting twist. So understanding all the joints in the body and how they move in unison to create power. So pushing off the ground, turning into the hips, turning the shoulders to have maximum reach and maximum power while staying relaxed and breathing out. Step number four is your simultaneous defense. So making sure anytime you punch, you're tucking your chin, so your shoulder of the arm that's punching is gonna protect your chin on one side and your arm or your hand is gonna protect on the other. That's for maximum safety, so your chin is protected every time you punch, and that goes for any one of the punches. And step number five is your recovery. So anytime you punch, you wanna come right back to your fighting stance. You don't wanna be off balance with your head outside of your base. So you wanna always come back to your fighting stance quickly so you're ready to pursue your attack or go on the defensive, whatever the situation calls for. So one last time, all your basic punches, throwing punches, the jab and the cross, and then swinging punches, lead hook, back hook, lead uppercut, back uppercut, lead overhand punch, and back, overhand punch. And there you have it guys, those are pretty much the basics about how to punch, uh, specifically to develop power first. Uh, further considerations, eventually we're going to look at the uh, speed of execution, uh, timing, so reading the reactions of an opponent to land our punches, precision, so that we make, so make sure that we can hit the right target. Uh, very quickly as well, we're going to look at control. So we talked about this in other videos and we will more in the future as well. But essentially, uh, when we start doing partner applications and learning the corresponding defensive movements as well, so that's coming up in another video as well, but uh, learning to stop our our punches at the surface with correct technique and control as well so that we're touching the surface but we're not hurting our partners training partners safety is always our top priority in training 
We're also gonna look at combinations, so basically how to chain your punches together. We looked at the one-two combination, which is definitely your bread and butter, but we're also gonna look at how to chain other punches together. And the principle is always the same, it's very simple, is every time you load and unload one punch, you're also loading the next one. So as you punch, 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 wherever the angle that you wanna hit from, you're always loading and unloading consecutive punches. We also definitely want to be able to apply good mobility and footwork. Uh, we want to integrate kicks, elbows, knees, as well as blend our striking arsenal with our wrestling and grappling techniques. And that's really what effective martial arts is all about. One structured curriculum for striking, wrestling, and grappling. So you want to be conscious of all the possibilities that can happen in a hand-to-hand -hand engagement so that you can really develop all the skills you need to stay safe. So hope you've enjoyed uh, this video. If you have, uh, click the like button right now. The video will appear in your like videos and you'll get more suggested content that's similar to this. Uh, but in closing, uh, please comment below and tell us what's been your experience in the martial arts? Uh, who are you? Have you practiced martial arts before? What style? How many years? Uh, what brought you to this video? Why did you want to learn how to punch? And uh, have you taught other people before? Or are you just starting out? Uh, is there a particular situation that motivated you to learn how to punch? So uh, we really want to get to know more about you, to uh, know more about our audience, and be able to tailor our content to serve you better. Uh, that's really our mission uh, here at the school. And as an organization is to help our students of all levels improve faster through innovation. So we're always looking for ways to do things better and to provide more value for our students. So once again, we're still just getting started. I'm still learning all the time as a martial artist and really passionate about sharing that knowledge with you guys. So if you haven't already, subscribe right now to our channel, click the notification bell so you don't miss any one of our videos. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you very much uh, for being there with us. It's really a privilege to be able to share this information with you. So till next time, Patrick Phillip here at Effective Martial Arts HQ in Pointe Claire, West Island of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Thank you very much for watching. Practice well.